Hello, welcome to a sneak peek of Cal Recycles Recycling and Disposal Reporting System, or RDRS. In this video, we will be previewing the look and feel of the data system and showing folks where they can type in their data. In this video, we are going to be previewing what it would look like for a transfer processor to submit a quarterly report in RDRS. We'll start by navigating to the Recycling and Disposal Reporting System login page by going to the home page at calrecycle.ca.gov. Then we'll type RDRS into the search bar and press enter. Now we'll want to follow that first link that says Recycling and Disposal Reporting System. So this is the main RDRS web page on CalRecycle's website. This page contains important updates and relevant information pertaining to RDRS. We'll click the link um, here that says log into RDRS to the, enter the data system. And so for this video, we'll be assuming that you've already created a web pass and uh, created an organization slash site with at least one reporting entity activity on it. So you'll click on that and this is the main login screen for our DRS. So we'll begin by typing the email associated with our web pass that we use to register our facility or operation. We'll press the enter key and hit next and type in our password, ensuring that the password protection phrase matches the one you defined when you created your web pass. I notice it is the same, which is good, so I can feel confident about logging in. I type in my password and press the enter key or select next, and that will complete the login process. When you've entered the proper credentials in the login page, it will take you to your dashboard. This is also known as the switch organization slash site default view. This is a page where you can see if there are any uh, items that need your attention right off the bat. It doesn't look like there are any, which is a good sign. Then we'll select our transfer processing facility or operation uh, called uh, Rancho Bernardo Transfer Station by going to that line item and pressing the select button to enter that specific line item under organization slash site. Once you have selected the reporting entity for, for which you would like to file a report, you will be greeted with the organization slash site summary tab where you can view pertinent information about the business facility or operation for which you are reporting. To file a quarterly report for a reporting entity within this particular organization slash site, what I want to do is take a look at this top left navigation bar, and you'll notice there's a button that says quarterly reports. So click on that button and it'll take you to the reporting module where you would report all required information. This is the quarterly report screen. You will see a table in which all of the quarterly reports you have submitted appear. So to create a new quarterly report in RDRS, I'll click Add Report on the top left right there. If you have more than one reporting entity on the organization slash site, you'll indicate which reporting entity's report you're filling out. It'll select transfer processor from the drop down for this example. Under reporting period, you'll indicate which reporting period you're reporting for. RDRS, of course, kicks off with quarter three, 2019. Under reporting requirement, you'll confirm 
that you are required to report this quarter or select an applicable exemption. For now, we'll select I am required to report this quarter from the drop down and click Save. This will create you a quarterly report. This is the area where you'll be spending most of your time filling out the quarterly reports tabs. If you take a look, much like the registration module, there are several tabs that you'll need to go through depending on what kind of reporting entity you are. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what each of the tabs contain to give you a better understanding of what all is required. So as this screen says, you'll want to start out by ensuring that the contact information is correct for your reporting entity on your organization slash site. If not, select the Update Your Contact Information hyperlink. Then you'll want to begin the process of actually filling out the report. So if you notice here, what you'll want to step through the tabs in sequential order, if at all possible, starting with inflows. So what we'll do is get started filling out our quarterly report by typing in some inflows. This is the inflows tab where disposal facilities and transfer processors uh, will report on what they received either from other facilities or from direct haul. Recycler, composters, haulers, and broker transporters will not see this tab because they aren't required to report inflows to the department. You'll hit edit first and enter the methodology, and then there are three tables below that. The first table, material accepted at your facility from transfer processors that reported in RDRS will display what other transfer processors reported sending you, provided that they have submitted their report prior to you opening up yours. However, if they submitted their report while yours is in progress, you can click on the Refresh Tonnages Reported by Transfer Processors button, and the system will scan to see if any other transfer processor has reported sending your facility material since the last time it checked. When someone reports sending you material, you may accept or modify those tonnages. So we're fairly certain that this will simplify reporting and help give us better data in the long run. The table directly underneath that one auto -populate, that auto-populates is where you would go if for some reason a transfer processor sent you material and they haven't reported yet or are too small to need to file an RDRS report. So if that's the case, you'd click Add Inflow and enter the jurisdiction of origin breakdown for that material received from transfer processors, the manual method. And in terms of best practices, if you're a transfer station that receives material from other transfer stations, It'd make your lives a lot easier if they submitted their report first, showing that they sent your facility material, and then it'd show right up on your report when you logged into it for the first time. The third table is for material accepted from direct haul, meaning everything that isn't from transfer processors, for instance, self-haul, recyclers, composters, contract haulers, etc. And this is an aggregate. You report the total tons of each material stream accepted during the quarter. For this exercise, I'm going to enter that I received 50 tons of solid waste. So I'll click Add Inflow and select Solid Waste for Disposal from the drop down. Then under Tons Accepted by Your Facility, I'll put 50 and click Save. Once all that's finalized, we'll cruise on over to the Outflows tab and take a look on, at what's going on over there. The Outflows page is where you report what left the facility. So again, you'll need to answer some methodology questions at the top here. You'll see that even though I indicated on the previous tab I received 50 tons of solid waste, 
it's not going to make any assumptions about what outflow streams are going out of my facility. In this case, I'll go to Edit, click the checkbox next to Solid Waste for Disposal, answer the methodology questions, and click Save. Now it's going to want me to indicate where the waste was sent, and for that I'll click Add Solid Waste for Disposal Outflow, and it'll take me to the Add Outflow screen where I can select the facility or operation. So let's say we're going to transfer the 50 tons uh, received from Direct Hall to Yolo County Landfill. I'll start by typing YOLO into the uh, RDRS ID or facility name box and it should pop right up with the facility. Then under ton sent I'll indicate 50 tons and click save. When that goes through, it'll take me to the Outflow Details page where I can confirm the destination information and the material sent. In this case, since it's solid waste, the material is solid waste by default. I'll confirm the 50 tons were sent in the Materials table, and then I can click the Back button to return to the main Outflow screen. I'm done with this tab, but if I wanted to confirm that all my outflows were accounted for, there is a summary table that will compare tons received to tons sent. That's this transfer processor outflow summary, and it is a good reference point. Now that I'm completely finished with this tab, I can tab over to disposal allocations. On this page, we can indicate the proportion of direct hauled solid waste versus solid waste accepted from other transfer processors sent to each destination solid waste facility. Since there's only direct haul at the moment, I can simply accept in the line item sent to Yolo County Central Landfill direct haul in the table allocation by each facility material was sent to to confirm that all the direct haul material is going to Yolo County Landfill and move to the next tab. I can reference the two summary tables, Inflow Summary and Outflow Summary, to confirm that what was received is being sent. Now we will move on to green material allocations. On this tab, we would do the same thing that we did for disposal, but for green material, potential beneficial reuse outflows. We do not have any green material outflows in this example report. And for all intents and purposes, the functionality is exactly the same as the prior tab, disposal allocations. So you've got the ability to reallocate the proportion of direct hauled green material and green material acceptor from other transfer processors sent to each facility indicated in outflows. So we'll click on over to the next tab, which is Disposal Origins. On this screen, you'll enter the jurisdiction of origin for all direct hauled solid waste. Recall that we don't need to worry about the jurisdiction of origin for solid waste accepted from other transfer processors because that's either been passed through to your report seamlessly if you accepted the sending transfer processors inflow, or you've gone ahead and reported the jurisdiction of origin for material received from each transfer processor. But that's already taken place on the inflow tab. So all work concerned with on this tab are the direct hauled solid waste origins. 
at the top of the screen, you'll notice that it's telling me that 50 tons of direct hauled inflows I need to go ahead and allocate. Then there's a table called Direct Haul Disposal Origins Accepted, where you'll click Add Jurisdiction and enter their respective allocations. We'll go ahead and assign 100% of the waste, or 50 tons, to San Francisco. So I'll click the plus button and then start typing San Fran. It should pop right up. Autocomplete does the rest. We'll tab on over to tons accepted and enter 50 and click save. Now we'll go to review origin set at the bottom right hand corner of the table and click that. This is going to refresh the page and tell us the ton sent to each landfill in the table disposal allocation by destination for direct haul. Now to complete the tab, we'll go back to the Disposal Origins Destination and Material Sent table and click Accept All to finalize the entry. A green check mark will appear indicating that the origins have been accepted. Next we'll head over to the Green Material Origins and see what that's all about. This page is analogous to green material allocations in the sense that you're doing the same thing you just did for disposal origins, but now for the green material that was accepted from direct haul. In this example, you can see that we didn't accept any direct hauled green material, potential beneficial reuse material, so we can go ahead and just move on to the next tab. But as you can see, the table is basically the same as the one on the last tab except that it's for green material. Follow the same procedure as outlined on the previous tab. Now we'll click the source sector tab and head over there to fill in the last major tab prior to submittal. On this page you'll indicate the source sector for all solid waste sent to disposal from direct haul. You'll need to break down the solid waste into percent or tons residential, commercial, and self-haul waste, as well as the methodology or methodologies used to determine source sector. First, click on the Edit button below Methodology Used, check all that apply, and put a check mark next to the methods utilized to determine source sector and then hit the Save button. Next, click Edit next to each source sector type and fill in the information. Hit Save every time you've entered the tonnage or percentage. When all that's done, we'll cruise on over to the Review and Submit tab. On this screen, you have the opportunity to review what was reported prior to submitting. You'll first need to click the Review button to have the system analyze your responses and um, see if anything is missing or potentially anomalous with your submission. There are a series of flags in place that will assist folks in correcting errors prior to submittal. For this video, I will not be demonstrating this functionality. Scrolling down a bit, you can see a table listing any revisions that have been started or submitted to this report quarter. After clicking review, if there are any flags, that will populate the flags table. The inflow and outflow summary tables are also provided here for your convenience. So this concludes the sneak peek of the recycling and disposal reporting system. Of course, we will have much more extensive online trainings available 
prior to the start of reporting, and we will be holding at least a couple workshops prior to the opening of the data system for reporting. We hope you enjoyed this sneak peek and welcome feedback on this presentation. You can send your comments and questions to rdrs at calrecycle.ca.gov. Thanks very much for your time and have a wonderful day.